Hello chess friends and welcome to out of chess channel and welcome back to our queen's game decline series so in this series we're following this very nice opening from whites and for blacks perspective and today we're continuing with our queen's game decline studies with the so-called baltic defense the baltic defense we have started recently and uh, we're continuing now the series a little bit more from white's perspective in this video i wanted to show you how to beat the baltic defense and many times the baltic defense is also called the grau or sahovich defense in my honest opinion this is something that you should try to avoid in my opinion and this is not a good opening for black there are many good ways how to play against d4 uh, we have seen really beautiful opening so far in our queen's game the client series uh, we have uh, seen for instance the ragos in defense we have also seen the vienna variation of the queen's game of the client so there are many many great ways in my opinion really the baltic defense is uh, something that you should try to avoid so in this video i want you to show a really beautiful gambit line uh in order to beat uh the baltic defense with some great great attacking formations that you can build when your opponent accepts the gambit it. and this i think a very very necessary uh study here because you will probably meet this baltic defense as the surprise element by your opponent and if you don't know what to do maybe your opponent could go strategically into the game and then he could cause you many many problems so that's why in this video we're going to solve now how to beat the baltic defense so let's check out now what is this very annoying opening and how we should pl counterplay uh, black's ideas of course here from white's perspective so our first move is of course d4 we have d5 and after move c4 we have the queen's gambit and now comes the baltic defense move which is now the move bishop to f5 and notice always that uh, when your opponent is leaving uh, with this bishop when he, when the bishop gets out then the b7 pawn is always always a long-term weakness so my recommendation here is immediately to take c takes d5 and your opponent could uh, do now many many things for instance let's see now again uh, this idea when your opponent takes uh, here with the queen on d5 uh, if your opponent does uh, this then of course we want to play knight to c3 and your opponent could play some Something like queen to a5 in order to prevent uh here potential e4 move but now uh, we should meet this idea with the normal bishop to d2 and still e4 is simply working because we can always take it and then uh, the, this the, this bishop creates a discovered attack against the queen even if your opponent is trying to still compete uh here for the e4 square still of course e4 is a possibility because after something like bishop to d7 then we can play even knight to d5 and you see there are many many uh here uh weak square in black's position even if you try to maybe trade off the queens the c7 is weak and you get forked so this is not something that black should do so if your opponent could maybe try some ideas after c takes d5 he could, he could try maybe some ideas knight to f6 this is also a decent idea then he's trying maybe if you play knight to c3 to recapture with the knight end then uh, he could maybe attack you further uh, around the square d4 but that's exactly what you should do you should simply play normal development knight to c3 and now if your opponent opponent takes as we said the main target is now the weak b7 pawn we should simply proceed with queen to b3 if your opponent takes now and he will probably take many many times uh what you should not do uh, and this would be i think a huge huge uh tactical mistake uh, then um, of course you should not take here queen to c3 because your opponent will probably continue the pressure here around the square d4 for instance even if you try e3 then he could break you with this move e5 comes with the beautiful beautiful tempo and now the threat is of course bishop to b4 uh the queen could get trapped so this is something that you should not do so that's why after move queen to b3 and knight to c3 you should keep the tension uh here and you should simply take with the pawn b takes c3 and notice now that we're building now a very very powerful pawn central control what i mean about the pawn central control is actually that we could have now really really a great centralized position with our pawn so now notice that the bishop on f5 uh could be all also a little bit uh, uh, an object of our attack so now with f3 e4 we could build really really uh, centralized pawns so for instance if your opponent is trying maybe something like bishop to e4 to maybe play something like bishop to d5 to attack the queen then we simply proceed with f3 uh, even if bishop to d5 happens we can play c4 bishop to c6 d5 bishop to d7 e4 bishop to e3 bishop to d3 knight to e2 so we could have now really really a nice attacking formation of course in one particular moment we can always take uh, the pawn on b7 c5 is here an opportunity so look at this he, your opponent is simply getting destroyed with this attacking formation so this is something as i said that uh black 
should try to avoid so uh here even if your opponent is trying maybe something like queen to c8 here to protect um uh the pawn on b7 again we play simply g3 with ideas bishop to g2 and then e4 again if your opponent is trying bishop to e4 f3 and then e4 is still working so we can do whatever you like and even if your opponent is playing something like b6 maybe he could protect this pawn in this way then we can play normal development knight to f3 and if he tries uh here something like e6 knight to d2 we're still preparing our beautiful move uh here e4 that's something that you should do all the time uh get your extra tempo against this uh, outpost at bishop on f5 and now you could have some really fun e4 f3 again bishop to c4 bishop to b5 are working normal development uh, maybe then afterwards something like bishop to b2 c4 i'm not sure but as i said uh many many times you will get your pawns really really in good shape you have really a dominant position in the center of the board so you see uh whatever your opponent does even if you if he's challenging you here with the knight uh, he will always lose the battle here i think around the square e4 and that's exactly how you should uh, consider this opening because many times when your opponent is not protecting the d5 pawn uh with another pawn he didn't protect in the baltic defense uh this pawn with e6 or c6 noted that that he could actually lose the battle around the square d5 around the square e4 so this is not a good method for your opponent so that's why many many times after move c takes d5 uh, in the beginning your opponent will simply give up the light square bishop and we have seen now many times this lines uh, by white queen to a4 then of course something like c6 happens and that was also uh the game that we have covered now recently that was played by stockfish stockfish won the game uh, with the black pieces in these types of lines and that's exactly uh what is in my opinion not a good opening line but i wanted to show you why it is not such a good opening line for white because uh, here after something like d takes c6 this would be a normal continuation then of course knight to c6 and after rook to b1 what i never really never liked about this line is this move queen to d4 and okay you could have maybe your fun queen to d4 knight to d4 e3 knight to c6 bishop to b5 and probably uh white is slightly better here but I simply don't like this position uh, here from white's perspective. I want more. I want more out of uh, this opening from white's perspective. I don't want to get the queens off the board. I don't want to simplify the game too much. I'm playing here with white, and that's uh, exactly what how we should uh, um, uh, how we should consider also playing um, with the white pieces. We should not be uh, satisfied with I don't know an equal position when we're playing with the white pieces. We have to be more and more aggressive. In my opinion, this is something okay we have a slight advantage but your opponent could defend this and we didn't gain so much out of the opening so that's why after move um, um, bishop to b1 my recommendation is simply to take rook takes b1 and now your opponent will probably play the move queen to d5 and now comes the fun part of this opening line that i'm suggesting you we should simply proceed with knight to f3 and in my opinion this is really one of the best methods uh in order to beat the baltic defense and this is now the line that we're starting now more uh, in this video so after move knight to f3 what your opponent could do is of course uh, to take here uh the pawn on a too but that's exactly what should should what you should allow well, many times when your opponent is playing many many times with the same piece especially when your opponent uh, is playing many times with the queen the queen is getting more and more uh, as an object of our attack so now uh, notice that the queen will lose at least two more tempi in order to get in good shape because now the queen has to move once again maybe to d5 and then another time uh, maybe to d7 so these are two extra tempi meanwhile we're doing something so you know when when Whenever you uh, play uh, an opening, you should always count your tempi. You should also always count how much time do I need in order to secure my pieces, in order to secure my king, in order to uh, create some uh, good positions for my pieces. So now the queen, as I said, would lose at least two more uh, tempi in order to get in uh, or get on a good score. So as I said, that's why we have to use now this moment and cut off uh, the potential escape rules for the queen. What we should do is, of course, to play bishop to d2. Notice, of course, that the rook was hanging on b1 but this move bishop to d2 is not uh, only a move that connects uh, the queen with the rook this move is very important because it takes a very important square for the queen the queen cannot escape on a5 if the queen uh, would have escaped on a a5 for instance if you play something like queen to c2 uh, in order to protect your rook then your opponent will play probably e6 you prob probably play, some play something like e3 now with queen to a5 the queen comes out with the tempo and now even if 
you cover yourself uh, then of course bishop to b4 could happen and uh black is i think a decent position black gets all of this tactical mass black uh, secures the queen but the queen is very active now so this is something that you should try to avoid so that's why it's very important to play bishop to d2 and it's a must move i think now because uh, if you don't do that you see there are many many position problems for your opponent uh, what your opponent could do is of course now to retreat here to d5 then we should proceed here with rook to c1 it seems at the beginning uh, that uh, this is bad because you have already played with your rook but notice now that the c file is open and this is now a clear target for us so that's why your opponent could try something like c6 but now we proceed with e3 and this is now the serious serious uh, uh uh, positional um, threat bishop to c4 comes of course again with a new tempo the bishop will be the best piece then on the board if we get it on c4 notice again that your opponent will lose another tempo with the queen because the queen is getting is getting more and more uh, as an object of our attack so your opponent could try of course e6 here now we play simply bishop to c4 queen to d8 and now the cool part is that we can build really, really here beautiful attacking formation queen to b3 look at this now uh in the near future we can also improve uh, the pawn to e4 maybe but here bishop to c3 bishop to b4 bishop to uh bishop to a5 hours maybe working if the queen moves somewhere so knight to e5 king side castling uh knight to e5 f4 f5 so many many great moves are here for white so although we have lost the pawn but i think the compensation that we get here is perfectly fine for instance there is also a beautiful dirty trap here if your opponent plays something like queen to b6 uh and if you wants to simplify the game and i guarantee you black will play many many times these ideas maybe not in the same position but many times he will try to simplify the game because uh, he's counting the position like this okay i grabbed the pawn now it's time to simplify the game and go into a variable life game. but this is not possible in this position because you can actually take a bishop takes e6 after f takes e6 queen to e6 now you have to cover uh, with your bishop and now knight to g5 is really really a dangerous threat uh because of queen to f7 your opponent will probably uh cover now with the knight and now queen to c8 this is really really uh some madness um, here on the board queen to d8 and now we can even take out this one your opponent could maybe take uh here the knight on g5 but now we simply take out the rook and you should not worry maybe your opponent could try and maybe here to um to lock your queen but this is not possible because you can always uh play rook to a1 and uh, this pawn is hanging for instance if uh, a6 happens king said casting your opponent could castle but now with bishop to a5 uh, the queen maybe has to move but now with bishop to c7 we have solved now all of the position problems so uh although your opponent has two minor pieces here here for the rook uh, but this is a much much better position especially because of the fact that we have here five connected pawns against these two pawns so we will simply um, let these pawns rolling and this should be probably a winning continuation here for uh for white so th that's why after move um, queen to c8 so you see this is already already a dangerous position for for black so let's go back um, as i said that's what our continuation if your opponent retreats here to d5 what he could do is maybe to proceed here with normal ideas uh, knight to f6 but uh, this is again not such a huge problem we can then play queen to c2 now queen to c2 makes sense because of course it attacks the c7 uh, weakens but it's also preparing the move e4 that's the move that we wanted to get for instance if something like uh c6 happens then we proceed with uh, e4 and your opponent could try to attack you probably with queen to e6 but now with bishop to d3 we have really really a solid position then again your opponent has to play another move with the queen that's the problem I, I think about this opening line for black you see again a new tempo with the queen but look at our attacking formation all of our minor pieces are, are out the bishops are out the knight is out uh, the queen is very active uh, now in the continuation we should simply castle and even if your opponent is playing something like e6 now comes actually the dirty dirty thing about this uh, line so you can actually even play d5 you just uh, let this position explode because you're simply faster in development uh, your opponent still needs uh, one tempo uh, to play with the bishop again a new tempo maybe to secure the king by casting so too tempy this simply too slow meanwhile we're already aggressive meanwhile we have already opened the position so your opponent could maybe try e takes d5 but now with rook to e1 notice that your opponent has to cover himself and now with bishop to c3 I would not love to play down this position from Black's perspective because even if you 
secure the king for by castling we can always take bishop to f6 e5 so the pawns are rolling h7, h7 will be taking so it's now a completely lost i think tactical game here for uh for black even if you retreat e6 is here even here a possibility so as i said this is simply such a bad bad position here for uh for black so uh, you see even if your opponent takes here with the c pawn then you get something like knight to e5 because um uh, notice that now uh, when uh, your opponent took with the c pawn that the light square diagonal gets opened here against the king then maybe something like queen to d8 and then bishop to b5 your opponent has to cover and now bishop to g5 wins the game because we will take out the knight and we will then afterwards undermine uh here the protection of the d7 and again it's game over you could maybe try queen to a5 here but with queen to b3 everything is pretty much solved so really really this is not a good way here for black to go on uh this is uh, simply simply too too slow uh the the uh, development is simply too slow so in my opinion white is always fa faster white will always build a beautiful beautiful attacking formation so let's see now different examples uh let's see now uh, uh the continuation if your opponent plays knight to c6 instead of uh queen takes a2 so your opponent doesn't have to take of course this annoying pawn on a2 uh your opponent doesn't have to accept the gambit uh after move knight to c6 we should simply proceed with normal ideas e3 and probably you will face also many times this lines e5 but you should not worry now i think d takes e5 is perfectly fine because if of course queen to d1 happens then we can also take and uh, this is not something that your opponent um, 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 is uh that wants to get because after queen side casting we should simply proceed with queen to e, king to e2 and now we have an extra pawn this is perfectly fine so uh that's why many times um after this move uh d takes e5 your opponent will probably play bishop to b4 he will try this annoying check but now you have a good defensive uh, structure here bishop to d2 solves again all of the position problems and okay now your opponent could take um uh, here b uh, queen takes a2 now he could accept the gamut in a different way uh, but now with bishop to b4 knight to b4 bishop to b5 is very important here because uh, you want to provoke here some weaknesses if knight to c6 happens of course we will immediately take bishop to c6 if your opponent plays now c6 okay we will retreat but the problem i think in this scenario is that your opponent cannot castle queen side anymore if he does it uh, notice that the pawn structure is simply too weakened and there is always the trap here rook to a1 and then if your opponent castles queen side then he will lose probably a the a7 pawn so this is something that we have to do bishop to b5 provoke at least some weaknesses and then uh we can attack again uh the position so your opponent could try maybe something like queen to d5 here um in this position maybe to force again a trades of queens which is i think many times the natural idea here for uh for black to simplify the game black will try as i said in the beginning of the video black will try many many times just to get a drawish position now out of this mess but now we should simply proceed with normal development so this is the beauty of this line we should not complicate things now too much uh, your opponent is hoping now for a simplification but okay we agree with this we agree with the simplification you can maybe try uh, queen to d1 rook to d1 you're trying maybe here to castle we normal uh, we play normal move knight to e4 knight to d6 is now also a beautiful idea here to get the knight on this very active square now f4 g4 h4 we should simply let his pawns rolling on the king side because we have here a five versus three pawn majority and if your opponent castles then we occupy simply the seventh rank so this is something also that bothers i think black in the continuation of the game you should never forget that we are simply better in development here from white's perspective so even if your opponent is simplifying the game a little bit too much then we simply take what we got so we have here an open file we can occupy the seventh rank we have here a weak square on d6 so these are now the strategical elements that we can take so your opponent could maybe try here instead of queen to d5 uh, also to attack uh, the queen but this is not a problem uh here queen to c1 it has to be played that's the only move but even if your opponent is trying knight to d3 it's not a problem bishop to d3 rook to d3 rook to a1 uh, attacking the queen queen to b3 and now with knight to d before uh, the queen gets attacked you will probably lose this pawn knight to c6 with queen to c6 are also some 
uh, tactical opportunities here. So as I said, this is uh, again a bad game. Queen to b4 can be met, of course, with king to e2. Uh, the, the rook would be would be trapped here. So the, uh, I'm not sure what to say. This is not also something that uh, black wants to get, this loose rook all over the board. So whatever black does, uh, he notice that he has to still play again one move with the knight and then another move uh, to secure the king by castling. That's something I think that bothers black many times in the continuation of the game. So let's see again if your opponent plays something like after queen to c1 knight to e7 just in order to maybe uh, secure the king by castling much much faster then we play also normal development kingside casting and now queen to c5 is here a beautiful beautiful threat because notice that bo both of these knights are on dark squares and you have to connect them now with uh, queen to d5 uh, pardon me knight to d5 and now bishop to c4 is also uh here here a tactical problem rook to a1 can be also played even e6 here is uh, an opportunity because after f takes e6 here knight to g5 uh you can use this moment for instance uh, in order to uh create also fork uh, here on e6 bishop to c4 is always always a beautiful beautiful attacking idea so your opponent could maybe try knight to e7 without even playing here a rook to d8 but again a kingside casting after a kingside casting again queen to d6 these knights are a little bit um, uh, misplaced i think here on the board so that's why again you, we should use now this element and attack both of them so um, again notice that the queen is a little bit loose um, we can also play the f forward something like queen to c7 the, attacking the b6 pawn uh, always what we can do is of course this maneuver knight to g5 knight to e4 and then knight to d6 if this knight gets on this very beautiful square this could be also very annoying to handle uh here for black so uh, let's see now different um ideas let we have seen now this opportunities with knight to c6 let's see now if your opponent plays knight to f6 um, then it's i think again uh, time to play normal development here with e3 here after move e6 your opponent could maybe try this idea uh, to play bishop to b4 but now we have to play b4 ourselves because again we can play this gambit line it doesn't matter if your opponent takes but now we should play normal development and again simply normal fast development moves your opponent will probably play bishop to e7 again in order to secure the king by casting but now we castle ourselves uh casting and now e4 we are simply grabbing now uh the center these two pawns are very annoying and this pawn is also holding uh, the position here on the queen side your opponent could maybe uh, make progress here with this idea uh knight to c6 but now with bishop to d2 we can protect everything and even if your opponent is continuing the pressure now bishop to c3 solves all of the position problems even e5 uh, here is not working because we can simply play d5 so the pawns are rolling you cannot do uh, anything here if you if you play here knight to d4 then the pawn is hanging so it's again i think a strategically lost game here for black so okay uh, this will be it for uh, the ball Baltic defense i hope um, that you understand uh, the studies um there are still many things that we have to i think study in the baltic defense, but here i wanted to stop because uh we should not really uh learn this openings just by heart uh, what happens if that happens and then you're i don't know uh trying to memorize this tactical tree that's sort of uh spreading all over the board that's not the point of the opening notice that your opponent if he takes uh, the pawn on a2 that he will lose too much time and normal development is working in every opening especially in these openings that are really really bad after queen to a2 as we said we're playing bishop to d2 uh, which is a huge huge threat uh, your opponent cannot escape and now after something like queen to d5 uh, as we said rook to c1 attacking first c6 and then uh, with e3 uh, e6 here bishop to c4 so we are simply activating our pieces securing the king by castling getting our center with the move e4 trying to open the position if necessary if your opponent lacks in development here if your opponent stucks with his pieces if he doesn't develop the bishop fast if he doesn't develop the bishop uh, the knight fast then even d5 we have seen as a possibility to let the position explode so these are now i think the most important 
tactical strategical moments of this opening so i hope i could have helped you because in my opinion you should really dominate against the baltic defense so okay i hope that you enjoyed the study if you want to see more uh, about this opening please check out our uh, Balt baltic defense mini series that we have covered here on my youtube chess channel here's the link uh, of uh, of our playlist and if you want to see our whole queen's game decline series here's also the link of our whole study uh, we have more than 50 videos about the queen's game declined you can have i think a good preparation in this openings and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course